How's it going guys? I'm going to talk you guys on a great week. So I'm back today with a new video. Today guys is a Dragon Age The Veil Guard related video. So a few days ago we got a high level uh, gameplay footage reveal uh, for the Warrior class. It's about a 10 minute video and there's so much information in this video. Uh, so what I want to do today is just delve in stop pause look at everything over analyze everything and just break this all down for you all because uh, there's so much information to take away from it i am very glad that they chose the warrior class because it is a class i'm interested in playing so i really got a good sense of what it was going to be like i'm hoping we get to more of them for mage and also rogue as well but we'll have to see um so let's delve into this and, uh, and see obviously what this has to show and uh, we'll see how we go Okay, so right at the start, um, Bioware basically dropped kind of a big story spoiler. So the footage that we see is set at Wise Help Fortress, which is obviously the birthplace of the Grey Wardens, and it's under attack by Gilanane and her arch demon. So we get to see a lot of Darkspawn uh, in this video, which is really cool. The fact that Gilanane um, is controlling the Darkspawn and has her own arch demon is friggin' crazy. Um, and I'm very much looking forward to, to seeing more. Um, so over the top um crazy crazy powerful i'm just so interested um in them covering the elven gods and but i would have preferred them not to even mention it like just don't mention it like we just we see footage with dark spawn we do see a dragon just don't mention it you don't have to drop spoilers there is no reason to drop spoilers this trailer is not about the story it's about the gameplay so for me personally that felt unnecessary um let's carry on so the first thing obviously here um, is we get a lot of information here um, and we get to see the UI finally. So we can see on here um, that obviously um, this is one of many menus. This is the character menu that we can see on here. Um, so you've got fully customizable equipment, Sim same as in, in you know every Dragon Age. So you've got obviously helmet and armor. Uh, you've got obviously here, which is your shield and your sword. I have no idea what this is. This is maybe a secondary weapon. So I have heard that um, different classes can have a secondary weapon. So even though you might be specializing into a warrior with sword and shield, um, and you might specialize into, say, a, a champion, which is what this character is in this in this video, um, you can actually have a dual wielding weapon as well as a backup secondary weapon, uh, which you can switch between. So that's really awesome. I love that. So if you're playing as a rogue, then you can probably have dual wielding um, blades, but you could also have an actual bow, a proper bow um, as a backup secondary weapon. I guess with a mage as well, you might have options there as well for secondary weapons, but that sounds pretty cool. Um, obviously, we've got a companion screen now. Bioware have confirmed that your companions are fully customizable in terms of their gear, so you're going to be able to customize their armor, their weapons, and everything, which you could do in a, you know previous Dragon Age entries, so that's not, not anything new. Uh, we're obviously going to have the skill trees, both the main companion and your... and the Both the main character and your companions uh, will have a skill tree though your companion skill tree is a bit more simplified we didn't get to see that in this video uh, your companion skill tree um but maybe we'll get to see that in future videos possibly and then obviously uh you know codex your library your codex and obviously your map so there's a lot of information on here uh, we can see here um obviously you've got scores i'm guessing this is your damage score um, and this is your defensive armor score um we can see on here that we are a level 30 uh, esher thorn uh, rook um and then we can see on here um reese Sources, which is interesting and I did notice during this video you'll see it I'll point it out for you but enemies do drop resources and obviously maybe there'll be some type of crafting element possibly in the game um, for you to be able to craft or upgrade gear um, possibly I'm hoping and we can see here three currencies obviously this is you know monetary currency and um, that you can probably use in in that for vendors and stores and what these are i've absolutely no idea uh, but we've got two other currencies here as well this looks like 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 dark spawn or enemies maybe this is some something that enemies drop and maybe this is some kind of like 
fade essence or something i don't know i'm guessing um but yeah three currencies i guess we'll see what these are going to be used for um in the game we still have rings we still have amulets we still have belts um that's cool that's very dragon age i'm playing dragon age inquisition right now and this is all pretty much the same um as in as in previous dragon ages so it looks like in terms of like the type of gear that you can wear and the customization, it looks like a lot of what's in original games has definitely been lifted um, into Dragon Age Veilguard, and that does make me very, very happy, which is awesome. So we're looking at our abilities here. So as I mentioned, we have three abilities and a super. First ability here is Driving Kick. Um, this is a very Spartan attack. You can basically, it can also be used to detonate. Um, so if you prime an enemy, for example, using Mass Effect terminology here, uh, you can actually then use this ability to detonate it. Um, and it's a physical, it does physical damage to the enemy and, and can also detonate weakened enemies, I guess. So certain skills will detonate certain certain uh, status status ailments i'm guessing um, but yeah you focus all your strength and deter uh, determination into one mighty kick so this is very much a this is sparta kind of attack which i love which is awesome and we get to see it in use as well which is pretty cool we've got uh second our second ability which is grappling spear um this is very much similar to an ability that we had in uh, Dragon Age Inquisition. I've been playing that recently. And Blackwall um, had an ability called Grappling Chain, which is basically where you pull enemies towards you. Uh, this also causes fire damage, which is really awesome. Uh, and it applies the Overwhelm status ailment, as we can see on here. So that I'm guessing that's a Prime uh, symbol on there, um, which, is, which is cool. Um, so yeah, I like the fact we get to mix up both primers and detonators and then spectral bulwark um this is like a protective kind of charm um yeah very cool reminds me a little bit of Baldur's gate three um one of the abilities in there um so you basically summon um uh, these these kind of magical shields around you and uh you know they take up the brunt of the damage and also if anybody hits the shields i think they take a uh, 377 necrotic damage as well um so yeah um you it's a, a, both a defensive and offensive um, ability as well. And then here we have our super ability, uh, which because we are specking into a champion, this is probably, uh, you know, and champions are, are sort of synonymous with Grey Wardens. Um, our super ability here is Warden's Fire, which is a Grey Warden ability, which unleashes a barrage of strikes with, um, with the burning um, strength that resides within every Grey Warden. So it applies burn to enemies and it does huge damage if we can see on here. Um, and that's our super ability so i'm guessing i don't we're obviously going to have multiple super abilities and maybe the super ability that we unlock is very much dependent on what specialization we go into maybe there'll be like a bog standard basic starter <laughs> warrior super but then as we specialize we unlock other supers uh, that are more powerful possibly depending on what we specialize into um but yeah there's just so much i would imagine there's multiple abilities and multiple supers now this is our runes um runes are not something that's new to dragon age we've had runes in previous games um right back from dragon age origins and um enchantment you know um so it's it's quite a familiar thing uh, for dragon age fans but this is a little bit different in that actually rather than these runes being on gear and on weapons and armor as they were in previous dragon age titles and they would give you like status buffs and, and certain things these actually seem to be uh, linked to abilities so we can see on here that we equipped a crystallize ability uh, which allows us to freeze enemies within a 10 meter radius um, and there are other abilities that weaken there there was a healing ability as well um, so these actually give us a fourth ability attached to this relic and this relic here um, is very clearly solace's blade uh, that he uses to try to take down the veil and this is also in the collector's edition you get a beautiful rendition of this um in the collector's edition as well but we have three that we can choose and from the combat gameplay i'll point it out as we're going through can it actually select between them so if you think about it technically speaking as a main character you actually have one two three four five six seven abilities technically um three which are 
you know, tied to your progression, one which is a super, and then three which are tied to your kind of relic or your ruin, um, and they give like an area of effect type ability, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, and you can combo them. So um, you obviously can choose runes that, like it says here, uh, will boost a warrior's damage and help with crowd control. Um, but yeah, we see here. So we so this one's crystallized, which is freezes enemies within a ten meter radius. This one is diminish, which uh, you know weakens all enemies within a six meter radius. Um, these are a lot of these are primers from the looks of it, and scorch, which obviously um, allows provides your weapon uh, with a, a fire damage uh, for twenty seconds, which is pretty awesome. And given the fact that dark spawn are weak to fire makes a lot of sense so this is very much a dark spawn fire damage sort of build that we can see and it does seem that like you know based on on this like there is a lot of scope here for for progression for build craft um there's a lot of scope here there's a lot of like really good core rpg elements that make me very very happy um so yeah i'm i'm actually really excited about this um i think this is going to be really useful and um really cool to like link that with your own abilities and then with your companions abilities as well which is awesome so yes, so we're now going into the skill tree, um, which is huge, can I just say. The skill tree is absolutely massive. We can see here that for the warrior class, there are, of course, we know for every class, there are three specializations. I have named and gone over these in a previous video, which I will link um, in the description below so you guys can check that out. And I do talk about these specializations in a bit more detail in that video. But for the warrior, they can specialize into the champion, the reaper, and the slayer. The champion basically is a sword and shield defensive main, um, much more akin to Grey Wardens. So they're very much about defense, um, you know, leading and, and sort of protecting. Uh, your slayer, that is very much your dual wielder, your heavy hitter. And they are all about applying damage. And then you've got the reaper, which is kind of new and looks kind of cool and um, is a lot about sort of, I'm guessing, debuffs and stealing life and uh, and doing a lot of a lot of damage i'm i'm very interested in all three to be fair um but obviously we can see here that you, you will have to choose you can respec though so it looks like you can actually refund um points that you've spent um and hopefully you can fully respect this if you want to try out different builds and, and see what else you know the game has to offer but we go into a lot more detail here, um, specifically into the champion specialization. So um, champion, I could say, favors strong defensive skills, um, very much akin to a great warden. So we can see here, this obviously is for your specialization. These are your abilities and that is your super. So it looks like as soon as you get into champion, straight away, uh, you can unlock the super. And this is I think for sure the the this here like the, the this kind of very shiny symbol seems to be super ability and then these here also seem to be abilities as well that you can unlock and these are obviously your passive your passives um from the looks of it um so this probably looks like damage buff here for attacking um and i have no idea what these are because i don't even think they select on it um but you can see here that there are so many damage buffs and so many passives here that we can see and then some of the passes are, are pretty cool like you have a, a a greater passive here which is heavy armor mastery so it looks like they are they are definitely going to still have that you know heavy medium light armor um specialisms in terms of armor i'm curious as to whether or not if you play as a as a rogue for example that means that you, you cannot wear heavy armor so you have to unlock it possibly in your passive um in your progression tree uh, to be able to wear heavy armor or to be able to wear heavier armor um it looks as well from what i've seen and what i've heard as well is that um wearing armor sets as well give you passive buffs as well so here you get the greater heavy armor mastery so while while wearing a heavy helm and 
and armor so that's you know i suppose you could mix a, a medium helmet with a medium armor right or a medium helmet and a heavy armor i suppose if you can wear both um but actually if you wear both a heavy helm and heavy armor you actually get a boost of 20 percent uh, to your defense um which is awesome so it just it just makes you more of a tank more defensible um which is really cool so yeah it does definitely seem like they're encouraging that that kind of thing uh, and obviously they've acquired that and then a part of the passive above that is um you gain flaming weapons on a perfect defense so obviously that's what this build is all about defense and parrying and blocking um which is awesome so if you actually perfectly i guess perfectly parry or perfectly block um then your weapons will you know will light up and and that lasts um 50% longer um, as you upgrade this and improve it, um, which is just so awesome. <laughs> it looks really cool, um, especially in the in the gameplay. So yeah, when when we parry, yeah, so that is when you parry. So it is about parrying, not blocking. So that definitely seems like with the champion class that you're going to want to get that parry window just right. Um, how forgiving that parry window is, and and I know, I do know that you can very much customize the game. Um, and I think parry window is probably one of those things that you can tweak to make it a bit harder or a bit easier, uh, depending on what your preference is. Um, but yes, obviously here, dark spawn of vulnerable to fire. Fire Resolve will grant us flaming weapons for a duration when we parry an enemy attack, um, which is, you know, awesome. I'm going to be playing a warrior, I think. I think the warrior looks fun. I, I played a rogue in uh, Dragon Age Origins and Dragon Age Inquisition, and I played a mage in Dragon Age 2. And uh, I'm going to play a warrior in uh, in the Veil Guard because it looks fun. So we can see here, obviously, our weapons. Obviously, here we can see uh, different color schemes. So obviously, there's going to be different rarities. So this is rare. I'm sure we're going to have legendary. Uh, we may even have epics, possibly. This is probably just common, right? So we can see here. Um, I kind of like it, though. I like what they've done here. I, I quite like the, the look of it. And some of the weapons look gorgeous look they look really nice so this is a golden cask it's a rare heavy helm um and we can see here that each of the weapons or armors or whatever seem to have these three pips and obviously these two are unlocked so as well as getting 44 defense and eight percent ability damage you also get plus 20 stagger and plus 25 takedown damage which is really nice but we can see here that there is a third one here that is currently locked and that gives you a plus 10 at stagger relative to lords of fortune allied strength so i'm wondering if um these here are specifically related to your background so if you are a, you know if you're if you're a gray warden maybe this would be unlocked if you were a gray warden specialist or um is it somewhat related to um if you're lords of the fallen allied strength i don't also oh, this might be related to your reputation it might it looks here like you might might be like if you've got um better allied strength with lords of fortune um i don't know maybe it increases but how we unlock this i really am not sure maybe this is a uh, we have to achieve certain objectives to unlock it maybe it's something that we have to upgrade it um to be able to unlock these um, we obviously don't know much more information on it but we can see here um that these are all you know things that have to be unlocked possibly or maybe it's the rarity so the higher the rarity that the more of them that are unlocked same here so you know this gives you the iron cast heavy um rare heavy armor so it gives you 96 descent, 96 defense 17 percent ability damage plus 25 necrotic resistance plus five max necrotic resistance and then th at the full upgrade it makes you completely immune to necrosis so i think this is more of an upgrade thing um for sure um maybe we'll see more about that later maybe we'll get like a video on crafting or something like this um same again so we've got our shield here necropolis defender these weapons look so freaking cool um but this actually gives you a plus one shield toss which bounces which is awesome so it's very like um you know captain america we can bounce your shield around different enemies and you actually deal necrotic damage to enemies um that the shield actually hits and it causes 200 physical damage on hit as well um which is really cool like some of these look really cool um and then the sword i think they're gonna you know focus on 
Um, but yeah, so, so Shield and Shield allows you to be more offensive. If you prefer a more aggressive playstyle, two-handed weapons deal more damage but have fewer defensive options. So this is your option for two-handed. If you want to switch between it, you know, depending on uh, what you're feeling like doing. And then obviously this is your weapon, which is the Spellbound Longsword, which is an awesome name. Um, does physical damage. It does really good stagger damage, which is nice. Um, and then this also does um, fire damage. And you gain flaming weapons on kills with this weapon as well. So not only have we got our passive like buff where if we parry we actually get a flaming weapon but also for kills we continue to get a flaming weapon as well and maybe those two things combined so it's allowing you to use both defensive and offensive style um, of gameplay and you're just constantly cycling that flaming weapon um, which is pretty cool and uh, yeah really really good so there's so much information so much information in here it's unreal um, it really is, but I'm, I love this. this deep dive into uh, the UI and obviously we've got the ring here. So this actually allows you to um, like, you know, build up uh, more burning stacks. Um, this increases your stagger, which is very nice. I think stagger is something that you're definitely wanting in this game from what we've seen of the gameplay. Um, it definitely seems more challenging. Um, and then here we can see our companion. Um, UI screen so we can see on here there doesn't seem to be as much that we can actually customize with them so we can see on here um, that we have you know our main weapon our armor our shield and then a secondary weapon which looks like a knife but the, your companions don't seem to have rings belts amulets like you did in the original dragon age games the previous ones um, and we can see on here as well that we can actually and i like this in their companion um, menu we can actually see what they think of us <laughs> so we can see on here with davrin that we have a level four and we are currently comrade in arms so davrin quite likes us quite respects us um which is really cool like the fact that we can see this because one of the things I, I always like to be able to see is you know companions will like or dislike or slightly like or slightly dislike decisions that you make but you couldn't see that very clearly like in terms of like where they were with you in terms of what their opinion and thoughts were of you if they were neutral or positive towards you or romantically you know inclined towards you or just you know friends or whatever you couldn't see that in previous dragon age games very clearly so it seems like they've improved that in dragon age veil vale and we can actually see this here which i'm happy about um that's really really cool um and then obviously there's a shortcut here if we want to go to the skill tree for them so maybe this is how we go to companion skills. But this might be an indication of their skill tree. I think this is actually showing us a bit of an insight into the skill tree. It's a lot simpler, less in depth than obviously our own skill tree. But we have one, two, three, four, five um, areas of the skill tree that can be upgraded. And we can see here um, that I think here you've got three uh, abilities that you can equip to them and you can unlock five abilities for these companions um but you can only equip three um but here but we can see here obviously um they've got their own you know style of weapons and again it looks like these are unlockable upgradable possibly um as we go through through it um but yeah obviously davrin is a is a gray warden um so he's very much suited to this mission um but yeah like and then obviously we've got our character select screen here I still can't get used to the character styles. I don't I don't hate it, but it just it throws me off a little bit, right? It definitely throws me off a little bit. So clearly we can see from Davrin and, and obviously the 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 tattoos here that he's got here, he must be Dalish, right? A Dalish elf who maybe joined the Grey Wardens. So I'm I'm curious to hear about him. Lucanus is obviously a, a swift and precise assassin with demonic aura. I'm very curious about Lucanus, um, and, and this week is Companions Week, so I'm looking forward to hopefully learning more about them as the week progresses. But yeah, obviously those are all our companions here that we can select from it. Um, but we can see here, right here, 
and they did mention this that certain companions will be required for certain missions so you won't be able to pick and choose necessarily for every mission who you want to take with you and certain companions will be required this is obviously set at wise hope which is you know a gray warden um stronghold so it makes sense that we would have to take davrin with us um on this mission and then obviously choose the secondary character that we want to take with us. Um, you know, so that makes sense. And we'll probably have other missions that are similar for them as well. And I think uh, Bioware even mentioned that there'll be certain times when you're going out on missions that companions just won't actually be available because they'll be off doing their own thing as well. So they're wanting these companions to feel very lifelike, very natural, like they're, they have their own story, their own things that they're dealing with, their own history. Um, um, and that's what they're wanting to bring into it. So I like this. I like having companions forced for certain missions because, you know, I like that. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm all for that. Um, but, yeah. But, yeah. So in addition to Davrin, they, they uh, decided to take Lucanus in battle because he has good crowd control abilities, apparently, um, which is awesome. So, yeah. So we can see here, just so we can even see here, detonates on overwhelmed. So we and and here applies overwhelm and detonates weakened so we can see here like it already gives you a little bit of an indication as to what they're good at where their skills and strengths lie um which is nice so that might help you depending on what skills and abilities you're taking with you that might infer who you want to bring along with you um for that for that mission i like the little smirk there <laughs> I love the little little character animations, little little things like that. So we're now delving into combat, um, and this is where we actually get to see a lot more of it. And we get to see more Darkspawn as well, uh, which I'm happy about. But can I just say, the game looks gorgeous. This dragon we have seen before in uh, a poster. And um, yeah, so obviously we see the Darkspawn here. So already um, we've got a lot more information here, um, obviously about your three abilities, your abilities down here. These are your ruins and we can see here that you can actually switch between them. So there's three which you can switch between and then it's triangle obviously to activate it. This here, I figured out what this is now. So this allows you to switch to your secondary weapon. So if you press down on the D-pad, instead of having sword and shield, you'll switch to your two-handed club or whatever it was that you had and then obviously we have our healing potions here um lots of information but yeah here as it says here first learn the enemy type uh, enemy types to strategically exploit their weaknesses dark spawn as we can see here are vulnerable to fire but resistant to necrotic damage um so obviously there's not much point using necrotic abilities so emmerich for example would not be very suitable in this situation because he deals a lot of necrotic damage um but obviously Davrin and obviously your own Grey Warden would be really good um, in this situation because um, they deal a lot of uh, fire damage, which is awesome. Yep. So so much information that you can take in. Now, this is interesting. I wonder if this is tweakable. So we can see here that abilities which exploit weaknesses have a green outline. So we can see here, maybe these abilities here cause fire damage or fire status. So these abilities will be very good against Darkspawn because they will, you know, lean into that weakness. Um, and they have a green, a green kind of outline around them. Um, I like that. I think it's like a subtle indication to you of what might be useful, what might be good. Um, it seems like Bioware is giving a lot of information, a, a lot of kind of visual information um, to, to the player. Whether or not like you can tweak this in the settings in the UI commands so that you don't get this information unless you really want it or you need that support some players prefer to find out and discover these weaknesses and vulnerabilities and try different things for themselves to see what works what doesn't work some players like that guide and like that information so personally i don't have an issue with it i, I kind of like it to be fair i think it will make combat a bit easier for newcomers to really pick up for things. I think if you're a seasoned Dragon Age fan, though, I, th I think these things are going to be very familiar to you. Um, and even if you're a Mass Effect player, you know, weaknesses and elemental weaknesses and primers and combos, that's going to feel very, very samey. I love um, here, so we can see, obviously, yeah, certain enemies are going to be ranged, certain ones are going to be melee. This here, we actually get to see her. Uh, so we can see here... 
She's blocking and parrying. Uh, there, there's a parry there. Um, we can see it's given us a flame, a flame sword there now, uh, flaming blade. Um, but it just looks, it looks good. And we see yeah, that's a very Batman kind of, um, you know, symbol there over the top of your head to show you how close that attack is. And we actually get to see that ability, which is awesome. So if you're near a ledge, that is what you want to do. This bit I love, like just using the cap that Captain America throw, like being able to shield throw um, is really cool. It can be used to take out obstacles. It can be used to attack enemies um, and also like to blow up probably explodable things, which will be near enemies. I think we do see some explody barrels later. I will be throwing my uh, shield at all of them. We can see here that your shield does have a bit of a cooldown though um, in, in terms of throwing it, I think. Um, and then here we see two pips above it and I actually think that your shield has a stagger bar on it um, and enemies have the same which I'll point out to you so obviously this is armor heavy armor uh, heavy attacks are good against armor which it does say here um, so resistance heavy attacks are the most effective against heavy armored enemies um, now you actually have um, the ability to a light attack heavy attack uh, jump and dodge roll as well um, and those do not cost you an ability uh, so we see uh, spectral ball work there which is that that kind of defensive thing and as soon as they hit us we saw obviously that they got huge damage and obviously got knocked back um, but it allows you more defense in in combat and we're switching to other things here we can see here this enemy i'm just going to pause it because there's a lot of information to take in here and i don't want to rush through everything so we can see here that enemies actually have a stagger bar as we can see here um, which goes up um, and once you fill up that stagger bar and you get that stagger bar actually filled you can actually then do a finisher which looks amazing and i've missed finishers we had finishing moves in dragon age origins it was one of the funnest things to do especially when like taking on a pride demon or something and just i remember it slowing down and jumping up and doing this amazing finisher move so i'm very happy to see that finishers are back in uh, in Valgard. i'm very happy to see that they are returning um, and we're going to get to see even more core abilities here. So bus, debus, and crowd control. I like this gameplay. So that's uh, we've definitely got aerial attacks and the uh, you know downward attacks from jumping. Um, but yes, but the action definitely seems more um, close quarters, more frenetic. So I can I can kind of see why they haven't they've, they've stopped the ability to port like to pause and top down view i can kind of see why they've done it um i think the wheel personally for me i think it works it allows you to pause the action it allows you to to get all that information we can see here as well that there is a new ability that has been attached here because this is maybe later on so i'm wondering if in the middle of combat if you can actually go into your ability um tree your skill tree and actually change the abilities that you have equipped here i'm wondering if that is the case i guess we'll have to find out but this is a completely different ability other than the kick that we've seen this is something called titan stomp uh, which applies overwhelm uh, which is useful um, because we can combo that um, i think lucanus combos well um, and detonates um, enemies that are overwhelmed so this would be good and we can see here it's already sort of pointing and telling us that lucanus is the one here that's best to detonate it um, so that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, this is another ability here. And it's an area of effect attack as well. It looks pretty awesome too. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely showing you there. So that is amazing. And it staggers and stuns and overwhelms enemies. And then obviously selecting on Lucanus, selecting Adrenaline Rush, which grants enhanced damage. Um, so I'm guessing he will then go in and just do a lot more damage on here. But we can see here there's a prime symbol here next to them. And we can see here... It's got like a bar that's filling. So obviously I'm going to guess over time this bar will reduce and then obviously that that prime status that they're in will disappear. Maybe you can have passive buffs or debuffs or whatever to increase the length um, that, that um, enemies are staggered, right? Or are primed, um, I'm going to guess. So yeah. 
But yeah, he'll do more damage to me. Seeker there, he's doing more stagger damage, um, as we can see. So Davrin has Heroic Strike, which applies the Overwhelmed debuff. This causes the target to take additional stagger. Right, so that so we can see that overwhelmed straight away. And look at the amount of damage that you're doing there as well. That's crazy. Uh, build act. Okay, hold on. Let me get that. So this build activates the shield volley passive, which ricochets your shield three times if you hit it with a heavy attack. I'm sorry. I want to see that again. That sounds freaking awesome. Let me see this here. So you shield toss, I guess. Shield throw. Throw. Okay. Ricochet it three times. Wow. And we've got a quick quick recover there. I don't know if you guys noticed that. Now, what I do want to point out here for you, and I'm just going to pause on, on here, is I want to point out for you here something that I have an issue with. So, for your own abilities, it seems that your abilities have their own individual cooldown. We also have here, which is our, for the warrior, this is called a rage bar. For the uh, rogue, I think it's called a momentum bar, and I can't remember what it's called for a mage. But you have here that you can see you get three pips. Certain abilities use one pip of this for your own certain abilities will use two certain abilities don't use any of your rage and they just have their own cooldown now one thing i i don't like is it seems that your companions while you have your own individual instance cooldown so you can switch between abilities because they're all individually cooling down and you can use what works best in the in the situation for your companions their cooldowns are universal so if you use one ability for example you then have to all of those abilities that that Davrin has for example or Lucanus then actually become unavailable and you have to wait for the full cooldown of that ability to tick before you can access any others now I don't like this I I'm not a big fan of this universal cooldown for companions um we had this issue before in Mass Effect I can't remember which one but in one of the Mass Effects I think it was like a universal cooldown and then they changed it so that it was individual which was much much better i think you're much likely more likely to be experimental and tactical if you have individual cooldowns because let's say for example you use an ability and then something happens in combat which means you need another ability but at that point in time it's not available uh, because it's on universal cooldown with all the other abilities and then by the time it does cool down the combat has changed the situation has changed and you've moved on to something else i don't like this universal cooldown i would much rather the companions have individual cooldowns for each of those abilities i think that would be better i would actually myself personally prefer that but yes so look at that armor jesus <laughs> So death from above, and that uh, detonates weakened enemies as well. That's cool. So that's that's his griffin, uh, which is awesome. See here, 41 seconds you got to wait. Six seconds you got to wait on here. This is the grapple spear, which we've seen. That was in Dragon Age Inquisition. It's just called a grappling chain. Same kind of ability, but still looks as awesome as it did in uh, Dragon Age Inquisition. It really does. And then in here, we're going to get to see more primers, detonators, and ultimates. We actually get to look at the warrior's ultimate ability, which is cool. I've, I've just got to say that the game does look gorgeous. I mean, look at the environmentals. and it. This is going to look so impressive on PC. And I'm very much looking forward to playing it on my 1490. Um, right, so we're going to command Devrin to taunt to gather nearby enemies. This is where putting them in certain areas. And then we can see here pull that enemy towards us with the grapple spear to pull him into the area <coughs> so he's over here too look at all the enemies bunched together and then here um we're actually gonna switch to crystallize which freezes enemies within a 10 meter radius freeze them so they're completely frozen in place and then actually then combo that with uh, uh with uh lucanus to actually detonate that um which is cool so that that's about the tactical side of things and comboing and uh you know 
using the battlefield to your advantage, which is awesome. And then here we actually get to see Rook's uh, super ability, which is for the Grey Warden, which calls down just fiery death, pretty much. Um, but looks really cool. Looks really awesome. And I'm looking forward to seeing all the different supers for uh, the different different classes and the different specializations. Um, I do say I prefer the, the look and style of these um, Darkspawn over the enemies that we saw in the rogue footage that we got to see previously. At least they look um, more like Darkspawn. They look more intimidating. Um, the, the glowy red eyes is kind of a new thing, I think. I don't remember them having that in uh, previous Dragon Ages, but... Yeah, they definitely look good. Um, they look dangerous, shall we say. But yeah, the warrior gameplay, man. And we can see on here as well, um, if we just pause it here, look at all of these debuffs, look at all of the buffs, look at all of the passives that are um, you know, in place here. I like the fact that we have this um, showing so we can actually see what things are clicking over, what things are in place. I actually love that. I love the fact that we're seeing this here. So we've got flaming weapons, we've got triple threat, uh, enhanced damage and then heavy armor mastery as well all of those things are procking um, which is really 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 awesome now i do think our shield has a stagger meter because it's purple which is the same color as enemy staggers so that tells me that we cannot just indefinitely block with our shield um, that that meter will go up and obviously if, if we are staggered then obviously we're going to be stunned and we're going to be vulnerable to attack um, most definitely that's a heavy so apparently the light and heavy um, the way that they do it is if you hold down the button you'll do a, a charged attack a heavy attack tapping the button is just a light attack I love that kick I think that kick is absolutely awesome um, really really awesome but the, the warrior gameplay like I don't know what the most popular class is and I'd be really interested to hear what what is your favorite class in dragon age what classes you've played in the previous dragon age titles and also what class you're planning to play in veil guard if you are going to pick up the game when it does release uh, which class is your favorite um i'm very curious to see what people think um i feel that warrior maybe is like your bog standard class but it's not it's never been people's favorite but they honestly, yeah, so we can see there uh, that you throw your shield at it and causes an area detonation. That was a perfect parry. And then I think when you parry, you can do a counter, which seems to be the double the double kick, um, which is, Jesus, which is really awesome. So actually, just pausing it on here, we can also see um, that you have quick time, um, sort of more quick prompt um, options. So if you don't want to hold down the wheel to bring up the full ability wheel, uh, it seems that you can actually select more quick time. So if you actually press R1, it'll bring up Lucanus's and you can select with his between his abilities. I'm guessing it's R1, although you've got down, right and R1. So I don't know what you press to bring this up. This is up. Uh, up left and r2 so maybe it's an l1 or something like that but you have to press obviously something clearly to bring this up and then your abilities are mapped uh to the uh you know icon button so triangle square x and circle uh to use your abilities so you don't have to pause the action you can you can obviously um do it a lot quicker um you know if you're if you're a more action focused gamer you don't want to break away from that combat you know what i mean it does look like um they've definitely got the ability to do that and that's pretty cool like i quite like that as an option as well um yeah and i love how much quicker it is to take a healing potion one thing i really hate in dragon age inquisition is the having to pause the action to bring up a wheel to drink a potion I find it really irritating so i love the fact that we can just flick that right that right directional gives us a quick healing potion and it's very quick it's a very rapid animation much much better um and then apparently you know even some of our companions can heal there are healing spells as well um in the game um i think restore is what it's called so that was the the gameplay that we got obviously for the high level warrior um there's so much information in in that video um it's absolutely insane but then we also got um a little bit very short pc trailer uh which was talking about 
obviously the PC, you know, ray tracing and D DLSS and everything. Game is looking pretty. Game is looking really pretty um, on PC. I'm not going to lie. Um, it's looking really gorgeous. Um, but we actually, what I was kind of curious about that we got to see was a little bit of mage gameplay. So this is mage gameplay here. Um, and yeah, we get to see a little bit of it. Uh, we've got ranged attacks, uh, more up close kind of thing. And uh, yeah, a mage class has generally speaking always been like a from the back line sort of class. But we, um, I want to see more mage combat. Um, I definitely, definitely want to see more mage combat. So that obviously is just a deep dive look at the warrior class. Um, I am even more excited. I like the look of this. I, I loved what we got to see with character customization. The skill tree looks really in depth. And then the, co the combat actually looks really fun. Um, so that was my, my ultimate takeaway from this gameplay footage was that this looks fun. This looks really fun. And I'm really enjoying looking forward to jumping in on the 31st of october and checking it out this is just a very rough and ready here are my thoughts here's my breakdown here's my reaction to the gameplay um very simple for you guys let me know what you guys think of the footage um in the comment section below what do you think of the warrior class what about this stood out to you um, is there anything that you're not happy about stuff that you're uh, you are happy about please do share those in the comment section below um i am going to continue probably doing veil guard just news videos and reaction videos and but they will be very kind of um rough and ready should we say so they're not going to be scripted um they're not i'm not going to be spending hours and hours editing them because i do want to put more of my time into my dragon age law videos that i've got planned um and also i'm currently playing through dragon age inquisition uh, because i am planning to do a story so far video so yeah i hope you guys are okay with this style of video um if you do like it if you did enjoy it do make sure to support the channel by liking commenting subscribing thank you special shout out of course and a thank you to my patreons and youtube members um, really appreciate your support thank you as always for watching i hope you guys enjoyed the video of course take care everybody and as always happy gaming i should go mm -hmm.